let's give God some more praise. You are my strength, strength like no other. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You lift me up, hallelujah. How many did God lift up this morning? Say, God, you are my strength, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. You lift me up. You are my strength like no other. Hallelujah. Oh, it's been a while since I pressed this floor. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. God's good. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. <laughs> oh, you are my strength. Hallelujah. Strength like no other. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Good morning, Asbury. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time. All the time. God is good. We have something to praise him for this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God this morning. Another day to be in his presence. Hallelujah. You are my strength. Oh, I am a child of God. Hallelujah. As I listen to the words this morning, hallelujah. Thank God. Falling in love with Jesus. How many of you fell in love with God this morning? Hallelujah. How many of you fell in love with God this morning? Hallelujah. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, Holy Spirit, fall on us this morning. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Holy Spirit, rain on me. Hallelujah. This morning. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Don't worry. I'm not going to keep you a couple hours. Hallelujah. I'm only, I'm going to be short today. Oh, hallelujah. But now I'm going to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, brother, not a priest last Sunday, and he just passed it on to me this morning. But he said, continue to praise him. Hallelujah. If I have to press the floor, and if I have to wear a hole in, hallelujah, you're going to praise God this morning. I just thank God, hallelujah, and being in this presence, I said, Pastor Pam, don't come out of that jacket. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory, glory. Oh, hold on to it tight. Oh, Pastor Adam, God is good. Holy Spirit's all up in here this morning. There's a sweet spirit in here this morning. But there's a Holy Spirit up in here this morning. God said there's no time to be silent this morning. God said don't let the rock cry out on you this morning. God said we got to praise him this morning. Oh, oh. God said we got to praise him. God said just praise him this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord. morning. Oh, we, uh, uh, thank you, Lord, this morning. Oh, thank you, God, this morning. Oh, hallelujah, this morning. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to open up in prayer this morning. Hallelujah. I told Adam, <laughs> Pastor Adam this morning, I said, oh, the devil thought he had me this morning. Oh, hallelujah. He said he had my knees like I couldn't walk. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, that's all right. I said, I'm pressing on this morning. I said, you don't know I can step all over you in so many ways. I said, I may not be able to run 50 miles, but one thing for sure, I can walk. <laughs> Hallelujah. As they say, you walk the walk, and I'm going to talk the talk. Hallelujah. Thank God this morning. Glory be to the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. I can't help from praising him because God's been too, too good to all of us. Hallelujah. This morning, let us pray. Hallelujah. Oh, God, continue. Send your sweet, sweet spirit. Send it all around us, God. Send it in every room. Send it in the bathrooms, Father God. Send it in the pews, Father God. Send it out in the garbage disposals, Father God. Send it out into our building, Father God. Send it out into the parking lot, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. Just send it all around us, Father God. We need your spirit within us at all times. Father God, the devil's busy, hallelujah. But we tell him to get thee behind us in the name of Jesus, Lord. So we just thank you. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Continue to thank him. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to tiptoe over and get my little water bottle, you know. Sometimes you get a little thirsty, but that's all right, you know. Because God said that's all right because we have a little water. You know, if I was like Moses, I could tap, you know, just kind of just pray over and say the rocks would give me a little bit of water, you know. But uh, God is good. Continue, Kalisa, and praying. Because, you know, you know my voice travels. If I don't have a mic. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. So good, Lord. You're so good. Hallelujah. We just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. I feel like far shut up in my bones this morning. But Lord, I just thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm not going to calm this spirit down and say it to sit down. Because, God, you've been too good. I'm going to let it release. <laughs> Hallelujah, Father God. So as I bring forth your word this morning, we just thank you first, God. We thank you for bringing us to another day, God. And, Father God, as I stand before your people this morning, help me to decrease, Father God, as you increase in me, Father God. But most of Father God, I ask you to speak through me to deliver to your people. It's not about me, Father God. It's about Jesus Christ. And it's about your word, the powerful word of Jesus Christ that saves all of us, that gives us that strength like no other. Hallelujah. That tells us that we have a friend in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, when you travel the journey that God takes you down, you can praise him, but you can share it with others, and you can spread it, because I'm not ashamed to share the word of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. So this morning, if you have your Bibles with you, I know a lot of you have all your little electronics and your foam and all. See, I'm still old school. I'd be up here, if I'd be using Pastor Adam's iPad or, or Nardo's tablet, i have it all upside down and backwards and the words wouldn't be right. I wouldn't even be able to find where I'm at because I'd be moving around and hit the wrong thing. So I'm still old school. And you know what? Old school is like a backup. So praise God for always having that backup. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nothing wrong with that backup. So this morning, I ask you to go to the New Testament this morning, to Luke. We're going to Luke this morning. Luke 12, 42, in the name of Jesus. Luke 12, 42, and then after that, I'm going to go to uh, the Old Testament. Also, we will, and that's going to be in Psalms 103, 7. So as I go to Luke 12, 42, and I'm going to slow it down so that we can hear the word of God. Hallelujah. In verse 42, the word of God says, the Lord answered. Who then is the faith and wise manager whom the master puts in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time. At the proper time. And then we're going to go on over to, back it up, to Psalms 103.7. And the word of God says, he made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as I read those two scriptures, the message that God has delivered to me to deliver to his people is, can God count on you? See, we're always dependent on God. God, I need this. 
God, I just pray for this. God, do you hear me? God, I was up all night. God, please, please, Lord, I need this answer by tomorrow. See, we're always asking God. But God says, can God count on you? Now, let me slow down and say it one more time. Can God, can God count on you? Think about it. Think about it. Are you ready to be focused on any, any task that God comes your way? Any task, any task. Didn't have one, any task. Can God, can God depend on you to perform a task to the best of your ability. Can he? Can he? Can God count on you? Can God depend on you to be faithful? Can God depend on you to be faithful? Or when your friend says, come on, we're going on down the alley. We're going to do a little of this and that. Oh, well, don't study the word. Don't do this for the church. Don't do this in the community. I'm asking you, can God depend on you to be faithful? What do you think? What do you think about when you hear the phrase? That phrase of, can God count on you? And I said, Pastor Pam, slow it down, because you don't want nobody missed on what you hear. Some might say it's a way of saying, can I depend on you? Others may wonder, can I rely on you? Still others may ask, huh, do you have my back? Like you might ask your friend, hey, we going out tonight, you got my back? I'm going to school tomorrow, got the bullies out there, you got my back? But God is asking this is what he's saying. May ask you, do you have my back? Do you have God's back? All of these statements are related in that they require a certain, a certain level or degree of commitment to a person or task. It is the same with God's expectation with us, with us as an individual, not the person next to you because they're responsible to allow God to count on them. We're responsible for ourselves with our relationship with God. So with God's expectation with us, he wants us to be able to count on us to carry out his plans of expanding and growing his kingdom. His kingdom. Expanding and growing his kingdom. My question is to you. What are the qualifications of a person God can count on? As I was reading through various of my study Bibles and dictionary Bibles and devotions. And I thank God for all the research and material he provides because everything that God has given me is from his word. And it says, what are the qualifications of a person God can count on? God needs faithful and wise stewards. He can trust. He can trust. Let's talk about some of our servant workers here at the church. See, I said, if I'm going to use any example, I'm going right on to my church, right at home bound, right here. If you're going to use an example, you either use yourself or use where you work at, use where you bow down, use where you pray. So I said, let me go to my church. So I looked and I said, God, show me, speak to me. 
So he started me off in the parking lot attendees, <laughs> the parking lot attendants. <laughs> and he said, uh, they should be alert, focused, courteous, and accommodating, and welcoming. Hallelujah. And I said, oh, someone said, why? Because they are the first to interact with members and non-members coming in to the parking lot. They either turning left or right. Or if they're coming from the back walking, someone's going to see them there. But they are the first responders to see members and non-members. And see, they got to be focused because every week they can see the cars that they recognize and the people in it. But they have to stay focused because one time it may be a vehicle or people they do not recognize at all. And God says, be alert, be focused, but also carry those characteristics and welcoming others. God is counting on them to reflect and represent his love for them. Thank God. So I said, God, where are we going from there? He said, we're going to the greeters. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. <laughs> we got greeters in here. Hallelujah. May have some greeters online this morning. Hallelujah. They are to welcome the people with a smile. Now, I don't know if you had some storms at home in the morning, but when you come to church as a greeter, you got to leave it there. And you got to walk, and you got to be at that door with that smile. And you got to just kick Satan behind you. And said, also, you got to know how to receive people in a positive manner. See, when you're at that door as a greeter, the parking lot attendants have parked the people. They get out of the car. You got the women strutting in their new outfits, their hats, their jewelry, their lipstick, their new heels, boots. And, they are, and sometimes they can fly by, you see, without you speaking to them. So he said, you know, you got to smile and be ready to receive them. Now, back in the days, the men would be ready because they have their suits on and their hats, and they had a little pimp with them. I don't know about now, but you know when the men would come to church, they did a little pimp. You know, we were dressed in our heels, but the men had it going on, you know. And, and it caught the center of the woman's eye, too, sometimes. And they're supposed to focus on where they're going to church, but they watching how they had that little walk going on. You know what I'm talking about. Huh. You know what I'm talking about. So God said, the greeters, you got to be welcome with a smile, and it makes them feel good. And then as they come in, we're going to the ushers. I said, oh, Jesus, thank you. He said, and the ushers need a smile because they got to give directions. They get directions here. Oh, that's my seat. Oh, well, honey, no seat there. Can you move on? Move on down. Say, well, the ushers got to have some patience. <gasps> oh, they wouldn't move this one. Ushers got to have some patience. Can God count on you to have those patience? So and so wouldn't budge. Get up, I said. Oh, God said, I have patience. Honey, will you move down a little bit, please? I just love you so much this morning. God said, you got to have some patience there. And then God said the ushers, at times, they got to minimize some stuff. They got to minimize distraction that can cause disruption to the service. So people come straight on in past the ushers. Ushers got to have some more patience. Oh, honey, you got to come back this way. Huh? You know, the attitude. You got to have patience. So God said, can I count on you? Can I count on you? The ushers got to be helpful kind and patience. See, every job in the church, God is depending on us to carry it through. Every. And I don't like saying every job. I say every task we have. No matter if it's just standing at the door and just saying hi, wave your hand. At the welcome center, waving your hand. So in all that, I said, God, thank you. Can God count on you? 
Let me give you three examples, three examples where God counted on man in the Bible. I'm not going to be long. Pastor Adam, ring the bell on me. I'm going to be long. Okay. So we're going to go to Moses. And when you have time, I ask you to go to Exodus chapter 3, and you may move on to chapter 4 because it's a lot to read about Moses. But I can't tell you the whole story. That's why God gives you that word to study. Hallelujah. So, see, we're going to talk about Moses for a few seconds because God used certain people to show you how he could count on them. And that's what he's asking us this morning. So it says, it tells about the story of God, about how he used Moses. He's, the story tells us that through Moses. It said, when the children of Israel were in bondage, hallelujah, in Egypt, hallelujah, and God wanted to lead them out, hallelujah. God teamed up, hallelujah, with a man named Moses, hallelujah, to get the job done, hallelujah. It said Moses was chosen, hallelujah, to lead God's people, hallelujah, out of captivity, hallelujah. It said Moses proved himself, hallelujah, to be an efficient leader. See, I, I could go way back. How as a baby, he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter, Egyptian. But then as he got older, there was some rattling in the storm, and he came, a shepherd boy, Hebrew, because that was what he was born as. But see, God always had someone in the back to help out. As they say, Egyptian, but his mother was there to help train him up as a Hebrew. So, see, God always, always has a plan. See, always had a plan. So, Moses proved himself to be a leader. Why did God choose Moses? Why did God choose Moses? Because he needed someone who was faithful and would dare to act on his word. He needed someone he could count on. Can God count on you? Can God count on you? Can he count on you? In Psalms 103.7, the word of God said, he made known his ways to Moses, the deeds to the people of Israel. His deeds to the people of Israel. If Moses hadn't been faithful, if Moses hadn't been faithful to God's way, the children, let me tell you, the children of Israel would never have seen God's acts. Who was in charge? Pharaoh. He thought he was the man, the king of everything. But thank be to Moses. Hallelujah. God used Moses. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to move on. To another person in the Bible. You may be saying, well, how did God count on him? Huh. In the book of Job. Hallelujah. <laughs> you can read the whole book of Job. I'm going to go to chapter 1. I just can summarize it this morning. Because we'd be in the midnight hour if we went to Job. We'd be like a shut-in having church all night. Just bring your packed lunch and your drink. Hallelujah. Huh. Glory. Man, Job. Huh. My God. Job was considered a wealthy man, hallelujah, and he was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. God allowed Satan to attack Job's faith, but in Job 1.12, the word of God said to Satan, the Lord said to Satan, very well, very well, but, he said, he used that but, and sometimes we may say but, Everything he has is in your power, but on the man himself, do not lay a finger. He said, do not lay a finger. Now, he already told him. You know, Job lost everything. Everything. Meaning his land, family turned against him, so-called friends. Because, you know, a friend sometimes can be a so-called friend. 
not a true friend. And pretty much, he went from riches to poor. But when you read the story, God rises him back up. Because he went through some stuff with all the sores and all. Even the one he loved tried to tell him to turn his back. But look what he did. When I say, can God count on you? Job stood firm on the word of God. He, at, at one time, he got a little upset. God brought him back, had to get him back in place. You know how God has to get us back in place, shake us up, turn us up. But he stood firm on that word. When you have time, I ask you to read it. Because in Job, Job 13, 15, when I read this, I said, this is what Job was telling uh, his wife, his family, his friends, and Satan. The word reads, though he slay me, yet, <laughs> yet, yet, will I trust in him. Yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. I'm standing, standing on that solid rock. Maintain my mind, my mind, my mind, he said. I will maintain my own ways before him. Job, hallelujah, is a model of spiritual integrity, a person who held fast to his faith. Do you have faith in God that God can count on you? He held on to his faith without understanding the reason behind his suffering. Sometimes we may not understand the reasoning to our suffering. Sometimes we may not understand why we got to go through this. Sometimes we may not understand, Lord, I went out the door, the car wouldn't start. Can't get to work. Sometimes we may not understand, but Lord, I can't put food on my table. Do you have faith? No, God can put the food on your table. Fill your pocket up with some jingle jingle so that you can get gas. Hallelujah. Do you know God can fill you up with so much love, joy, and peace in your heart that when your family has a storm, you can be in peace within the spirit of your house and calm it down. Job had faith. No matter what you go through, God said, if you have faith, <laughs> talks about that much, but we ain't going there this morning. Huh? But Job had faith. All the suffering he went through. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The book of Job <laughs> teaches us to trust God in all circumstances. Hallelujah. Can God count on you? Can God count on you? And then another person God depended on was, and it's in the New Testament, John. Oh, who was one of Jesus' disciples. Hallelujah. He had 12 disciples. Now you think about it. John, one of his disciples. Remember Jesus hanging on the cross and, and they would be asking, do you know this man? You know how the disciples scattered? Who? You ever scattered from a, a storm? You ever go out to a club and a fight breaks out and you start scattering? You're trying to hide underneath a bush? No, you can't get under that car. You start running, trying to figure out where I'm going to squeeze into. I'm going to hide. The people started scattering. Disciples were scattering, but John, the one God loved, said, it said that uh, Jesus needed him to take care of his mother. Hallelujah. And when you go to John 19, 26, the word of God reads, says, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciples back it up I said disciples remember I said one disciple John John and he saw disciple in the name of Jesus there he said woman here 
is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Even, even, even while dying on the cross, Jesus was concerned about his mother, about his family, and looked down and he saw John nearby. He instructed John to care for Mary, his mother, knowing he could count on him. Can God count on you? If you want additional information about that, go to the seven last words in the New Testament. But Jesus loved John. I'm going to three points as I get closer to closing. And the first one is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Say it again. Faithfulness. Can God count on you? For us today, your faithfulness to God, purpose, holds the promise of great reward. Hebrew 11.1 1 says, faith is substance of things hoped for and evident of things not seen. King James Version. Then we're going to go to commitment. Hallelujah. 1 Kings 8.61 says, And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decree and obey his commands as at this time. This time. Commitment. Can God count on you? And third, strength of character. Strength of character. As I studied the word, informed me that character has been defined as what one is. What one is. It's the very essence of a person. The Bible says... Much about God's character, such as God is love. Hallelujah. God is compassionate. Hallelujah. God is merciful. Hallelujah. He is, act, he is very active in how to show his character to others when we belong to him. It says when we belong to God. I say when we belong to him. We reflect his characteristics. We are kind, as God says, we are kind. He's telling us both to be kind, loving, caring, compassionate like him. So it's giving you his characteristics, kind, loving, caring, compassionate. God said, this is what I want you to be. Parking lot attendants, greeters, ushers, every position in the church, all of us, not them, all of us, servants, all of us, paid staff, all of us, all of us. He wants us to have those characteristics. Reflect that, those characteristics so that we can follow them, so that we can love so that we can be caring, and so that we can serve. In closing again, I ask the question, can God count on you? God needs you, just as he needed Moses, Job, and John. He needs you to be faithful. He needs you to be trustworthy, to know his word, not our word, but his word, and be obedient to it. Can God count on you? Can God count on you? Hopefully, your reply will sound something like, if you need somebody, send me. Or simply put, count me in. 
can God count on you? Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Can God count on me? Hallelujah. Can God count on you? Hallelujah. Can God count on you? When you're sitting home this afternoon, this evening, and you're watching your favorite football game, just take a little time and step to the side and say, can God count on me? Hallelujah. When you think about you got another show to go to, you think about it says, well, I need to put that to the side because I got to remember, can God count on me? Can I give up this time of TV tonight so God can count on me to do some business in the church? Hallelujah. Glory. I said, uh-huh. I don't need to go shopping today because today I want God to know he can count on me to put my priorities in order. Hallelujah. God said, I can give you time to do other things, but I'm just asking you, can God count on you? Hallelujah. Not only here, but in the community. There's a lot of work in feeding the homeless. Hallelujah. Kids that have been abused, God said, can I count on you to show love and to care to call them up and check on them? Hallelujah. God said, can I count on you to go to the nursing home if you can't get in the door to just peep in the window and say, I love you, sweetie. Hallelujah, God said, can I count on you? Glory. Glory. The word doesn't step on the toes of us. The word is the word of God. And God is just trying to get all our attention in this crazy world today. But it may be crazy, but you know what? In all the storms that are rolling, God's right there looking at you. God's right there embracing you. God is saying, I got all this love for you. God said, you can do all things through Christ. He said, don't worry. Be happy. He said, just remember you serve a loving God, a caring God, a God that can love forever and ever. Hallelujah. So we just thank God this morning and we just praise him because you know what? Victory is still ours. No matter what happens in our life, victory is still ours. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Glory be to the God, our Father. To those that are online this morning, even watching this morning, someone may not know God for themselves. Hallelujah. But I just ask you, wherever you may be, if you just can bow your head, if you can't raise your hand, if you can just sit where you are, if you have to lay and you don't know God, if you're mm -hmm. in the alley from the drugs trying to take you away, hallelujah, I just pray to God that you will accept him as his personal savior. Just accept him. You don't have to say a long word, so long sentence. All you say is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus calling your name, calling your name. All you say is Jesus in your mind. Jesus, hallelujah, glory be. Just accept him. He will give you a clean heart. He will make you brand new. Hallelujah, that's how good he is. He touched, she touched the hill of his garment. And she was made whole, and she was cured again. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Hallelujah. The man who lay by the pool of Bethesda, he told him to pick up. Picked it up, his bed, his cloth. Told him to walk. Hallelujah. I thank God. Accept him as your personal savior. You'll be a new person, you'll be stronger, you'll be mighty, and you will walk with a glow around you. As I close the day and pray for everyone, may God bless you today. I ask God as you leave here today to continue to hear your prayers unto him. I ask God to strengthen you and your family. We've been through some things in the last two years or so. But you know, when you think back of over all the years, some of the stuff that is trying to attack us has been here all the time. It just came to blossom just like a rose opened up. So it just came to open up on us all. 
But God said, if you continue to hold on to God's unchanging hand, you will get through the storms that are out there on the ocean. I pray God will just take you forward. I pray God just will give you peace. Hallelujah. I pray God will give you joy. Hallelujah. And happiness in your family. Whatever sickness trying to take, ask God to take control. In his healing power. It could be financial. It could be your mind. So many minds now. The mental illness. But I ask God to wipe it out. To take control. To send help to you. Because God created every doctor. God created everyone on this earth. There's nothing too hard for Jesus Christ. Today I say go in peace. God loves you and I love you too. God bless you. God bless you. It is for me. Come on, I know. I know without a doubt.